Welcome to the Media Minute Roundtable. For this episode, we're going to be talking Disenchantment, WandaVision, and a whole bunch of stuff that's coming out via HBO. We'll be back right after this. And we're back to the Media Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Reskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And uh, we're going to talk to you again about what's going on in entertainment. Now, a couple of things dropped last uh, Friday. One of those, Matt Groening's kind of newest project, which is a disenchantment. Of course, Matt did The Simpsons. He's done Futurama. So he's done like present day. He's done the future. And now with the disenchantment, he's doing kind of a medieval fantasy type thing. And uh, they're on the season three right now. So, Rachel, I know that you've seen a few episodes. What do you think? I'm not sure. I'm like honestly conflicted because it's like I am a huge Matt fan. Like I love The Simpsons. Like that's something we used to watch all the time on Sundays and everything. But yeah, I don't know. Like the first two seasons were great, but this season I'm I'm having a hard time trying to get a feel for it. I feel like they had their plan for like the first two seasons and then they've kind of run that story. And now that they're not quite sure where to go, because there's like a lot of plots where they go somewhere and then they just leave without really resolving anything hmm. so it's, it's hard to say like uh simpsons and uh, futurama they were episodic shows because so basically everything was contained in the episode but with the uh, disenchantment they're doing like a long story arc type thing so yeah um yeah i'm kind of lukewarm on it myself but uh it'll be interesting to see where they go if if they go any further they're at three se- seasons now for netflix so it's hard to say. Yeah, it's like the typical Netflix uh, thing, right? <laughs> and if you're getting past like two or three seasons for Netflix, it's, uh, yeah, so it's sometimes difficult. Cause um, yeah, because yeah, this is my first introduction to that show. Like, of course, Simpsons and Futurama were amazing, but I, I never really, uh, well, like, well, you showed me, like, season three was like my first exposure to it. Yeah, I think that's where I and messed up, though. Like, I, I don't know. It's not, the jokes don't land. It's, it's not funny. Yeah. It's, it's not, uh, I, I think. I don't know if it's supposed to be funny. The highlight of, like, Matt's stuff has been Futurama for me. Yeah. Because Simpsons is basically like a walking zombie at this point. Oh, yeah. They, oh. Had, they had, like, a bunch of seasons, like, back when Conan uh, O'Brien was writing for them. Oh, yeah. That's some of the best. Stuff, like, the golden years of The Simpsons. Yeah. The, the monorail yeah. episode, right? But, uh, you know, it's one of those shows that you're like, it's, it's, it's still on. Of course, Futurama had its run. Uh, it was canceled a couple times, but they came back a couple really? times. Was it one of those shows that was, like, saved by DVD purchases? Like Family I Guy think so. Uh, they did, like, a couple of movies after the original run, like oh, okay. one-hour specials. And uh, then they brought it back for, like, a final wrap-up where they finished off, like, any dangling story threads. But, uh, no, I, I think uh, Futurama, out of those three series, has, has been the highlight so far. And um, But, yeah, sorry, uh, Disenchantment. Thumbs down over here. Yeah. Not, not, You're not n- feeling it. No, I probably won't go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't land, it didn't land. To be fair, though, it's like you also started in, like, season three, episode one. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you didn't didn't really get, like, the the introduction I feel like everybody else did, like, when it started with the first season and the second season. Because for me, anyways, the first season was awesome. I thought it was great. The second season was pretty good. But, yeah, like... Yeah, I don't know. If, if season three is indicative of the first two seasons, I, I'm going to pass. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it is. Yeah, it's not really. Like I said, I think they were more focused. They had their plan for, like, the first two seasons story-wise. Yeah. But this one seems kind of freeform. Huh. It's I, almost like the writers had the ability to be like, hey, I want to throw that in there. And they were just like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be too busy watching The Night Stalker. <laughs> yes, yeah, speaking of The Night Stalker... Uh, that also dropped uh, recently on uh, Netflix. And uh, Rachel, you mentioned that there was a little bit of controversy with that. Yeah, it's really weird. I actually read it. I think it was the New York Post. Um, and they were saying that a lot of the critics are basically saying that it's too graphic for, like, the small screen. But yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like I've seen way more graphic content on Netflix versus The Night Stalker. Like, the only thing that I thought maybe could have been held back a bit was, like, Maybe not showing as much of the crime scene, but then again, that's true crime. Like, that's what yeah, you're there yeah. for. Hey, that's half of Netflix is true crime shows. Yeah. And, like, what do you think you're going to get when you watch a documentary on one of the, like, the most notorious serial killers in American history? Yeah. Speaking of, The Night Stalker is about uh, Richard Ramirez, right? Yes, yes. you got her. Uh, he uh, was a serial killer in L.A. back in the mid-'80s. Yeah. And uh, Night Stalker goes through, it speaks to the police officers 
uh, who were involved in the case and various other people related to the uh, case and uh, how they went about uh, eventually catching him. Spoilers. After, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it, there's four, about four, 45 minute episodes. Yeah, uh, I yeah, say that's right. Yeah, it goes through like the entire thing. And uh, some pretty wild stuff comes up. Yeah, like, I think the craziest thing for me is because, like, I never heard of the Night Stalker before this, which, which is, is crazy because, yeah, like, I watch I all of the true it. crime and, like, I'm, I'm obsessed with that kind of stuff as, you know, every basic white girl is. But it was crazy because it was, like, being first introduced to him and then the cops being like, we think this is, like, multiple people because it was like, he was he didn't just murder people, he did other horrendous things as well. And just, like, them, like, completely finding out it's one person based on a shoe print. Yeah, and th- this, <laughs> this is the wildest thing about this. This man, this serial killer, had like the only pair of a certain shoe in L.A. Yeah, like there's one pair sold in all of like L.A. Yeah, and, and they, they were able to track down. him through this shoe. And uh, there was a bit of controversy because they wanted to keep it quiet that he was the only person with this shoe because if he went out to the press, uh, they figured, you know, he would change his uh, footwear. So, uh, you know, there's a bit of a story about them trying to keep that quiet and uh, uh, the uh, reporters kind of pressuring the cops on, like, releasing more information than probably should have been released, I think, maybe. Oh, yeah. I think in one of the episodes they delve into that definitely because it's like they released some information and then, like, the cops were like, are you kidding me? Like, why did you put that out there? Because now he knows, like, we're looking for him kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 still, I still just can't get over, like, the outrage. Oh, it's too graphic. Like, what? <laughs> did, you, did, did you want like a family friendly version? Yeah. Like, hey kids, <laughs> hey kids. Uh, after dinner, uh, do you want to check out the new <laughs> six part <laughs> series on Jeffrey Dahmer? I hear it's a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. Like no, this is not something you watch with your kids at all. But like, I can also see like how people were kind of disturbed by it. Like there, there was a few crime oh, yeah. scene photos that like I can understand where people were a little squeamish. But at the same time, it's like if you're too uncomfortable, just shut it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody's forcing you to watch the whole thing. <laughs> like again, like you're watching a documentary, yeah. but a serial killer. Like what? And not just what? any serial killer. Like, this guy was nuts. Yeah. Like, were they were supposed to replace the bodies with, like, Care Bears? Yeah. That, that makes no sense. That would be kind of messed up. And I might try that one. Care Bear reenactment? <laughs> Anyhow, sorry, I got a yeah. little talk off topic oh, here. Oh, he did. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, no, they do show, like, the real crime scene photos, and they are graphic, so, you know, if you haven't watched it yet, there's your warning. Yep. Yeah, it is rated mature for TV audiences. For sure. For sure. Now... Uh, HBO released a uh, teaser trailer uh, a little bit earlier this week, and uh, you don't really see much. There's really short clips of various things that's uh, coming out throughout the year. They're kind of pushing the fact that things are going to be released in the cinema, we think. Yeah, and, cinema. Uh, you know, they're doing the concurrent releases on HBO Max. They've already done it with Wonder Woman to, I think, lukewarm kind of. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, coming up uh, first off. Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, I am salty about that. Yeah? In really? all honesty, yeah. What? I don't like the design of Kong. I think they messed up. Is there is it the dinosaur to gorilla ratio? Well, Godzilla's not a dinosaur. Eh, basically. No. Yeah, don't is. you put Godzilla in that. No. <laughs> he's a dinosaur. No, he's not. Don't. Internet, help me out. Oh, boy. Oh, don't. You're getting me heated. Uh, no, but, like, I don't Godzilla's know. Like, for me personally, it's like watching Skull Island. I was really Godzilla's excited because the dinosaur. casting was really great. Yeah. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, yeah, like, and then the design came out, uh, like Kong came out, and I was like, yo, this is disappointing. I, 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 yeah, I didn't mind it. I didn't like it I always it thought Kong was like on a smaller scale than Godzilla. So did yeah. I. So yeah, like, I don't definitely. know if they, they give him one, like Captain American, like drugs to <laughs> enlarge Kong so he could face Godzilla. No, it, but uh, my, my favorite part is uh, not it, just because like Godzilla, obviously, and well, King Kong too has such established fan bases. Yeah. So, like, the hardcores come out and say, like, well, technically, Godzilla's radioactive and King Kong, just having been yeah. exposed to Godzilla, would just, like, die just of radiation die. poisoning. Yeah. So that's, that, I, I love that stuff. It's oh so Oh, my God, fun. it's great. Because it's, like, you just know, like, how much... The like, hardcores come out. Yeah, like, yeah. how much they care about the characters. And, like, Godzilla and King Kong are, like, iconic. Like, they, they've been around forever. Oh yeah. Literally, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it's, like... I don't know. I'm like I'm excited to see it, but I'm just I, I get the biggest thing for me is the design of Kong. I feel like they could have done better. I don't know how I feel about like the newer iterations of Godzilla. Like I've always been yeah. a fan of like the old kind of seventies, kind of cheesy Godzilla. Oh, you, those were the best. You know, with like the min- the miniature sets and all that stuff. Ultraman shows uh, up. Obviously, yeah. a guy in a suit. You know, uh, they build Mecha Godzilla at one point. So yeah, like. 
they were able to like create like an entire universe with these like crazy creatures and it was just like so cool to watch because like back then it's like they didn't have the graphics like it's like they had to build yeah. those little cityscapes and like do all of that stuff so like i feel like the work put in it is way different what for was, sure what was the turtle one uh oh remember him he was great Gamora, yeah yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Like, yeah yeah mothra mothra was mothra rodan killer. was one I think. yeah yeah, but uh, a lot of I- iconic uh, things that came out of, like, those old Godzilla yeah. films, which I, I don't think have, has ever been, like, really recreated. Like, they had their thing, and I don't remember, like, anyone kind of attempting that. I don't, yeah, not really. Hey. Yeah, like, I think I think this, like, recent release of, like, Godzilla has been the closest. Yeah. Just because they actually, like, kind of stuck with some of the other, cre- like, creatures and stuff. But the problem with it was it's so dark. Like yeah, you didn't yeah. even get to see the creatures until like the final battle scene. Kind of. Well, well, that's the thing with like a lot of film and television now. Everything seems to be leaning towards like dark. Yeah. I mean, the, there was an episode of the last season of Game of Thrones where they had a battle at night, and you couldn't see anything. Yeah, it's like that's what everybody was waiting for, and it's like, okay, let's watch. And then you're like, I, what? Like, yeah, what's like, going on? <laughs> pull, pull up your waveform monitors. Like, they're, they're not hard. <laughs> like, it, even the, like was it um. How to Train Your Dragon 3, the beginning, the yeah. opening scene, I was like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Like, maybe it's just, like, the vibe that they're kind of going for. It's like, oh, it's dark, it's creepy, it's ah, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like you're taking so much away from it, because it's like, you put so much work into it, like, why are you trying to hide it? Yeah. Yeah, like, if I was on that anime, like, on the animation team, I'd be kind of a little that, salty yeah, about that. that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, oh, absolutely. I can't see all the work that I've done. Yeah, cool. Well, speaking of dark films, uh, Space yeah. Jam 2 is a thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, wow. I don't, I don't is is nothing I, sacred? I don't know how I feel about this. Um, well, I no, I'm just I gonna can... put my blinders on and pretend it doesn't exist. Okay, well, as like well, a, as a hardcore Space Jam fan, it's like I was kind of upset like hearing that they're doing a second one. But at the same time, like Jordan was that generation's like iconic player, right? So it's yeah. like, why wouldn't they do one for like the current generation with LeBron? Right? And LeBron's no Jordan. <laughs> oh, you can't compare the two. You really can't. I know people are like, oh, LeBron's better than Jordan, or Jordan's better than LeBron. Yeah, they I, I know they play a, completely different here's, positions. <laughs> here's my thoughts. I, I think both of them have about the same acting ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. But, uh, yeah, if anything's going to carry that uh, movie, it's going to be the, uh, the uh, Looney Tunes. Are they doing it, like, the same way that they yeah. did the original? Okay, good. Yeah. This is actually happening. Yeah. It's, oh, they've already, yeah. like, Yeah, they've released a it. teaser or right. something, yeah. like, I think, where Bugs is talking to LeBron. Yeah, like LeBron released it on all of his like social media sites when it like first came out, and I think that was like a couple years ago now. Yeah. Fun fact: the original Space Jam website from 1996, I, I think, is still up. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. It's a piece I checked of, like it's know, a piece we... of internet history. So if you want to see the, what the original Space Jam website was, GeoCities. Yeah. Oh my God! I know what I'm doing after this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, it's still there. It's amazing. And uh, speaking of, well, we touched on this last week, but, uh, yeah, they did a little preview for Tom and Jerry as well. Uh, yeah. Again, they're going to be doing the, that mix of uh, live action and animation. So we'll see how that goes. I hope that works out. Yeah. Uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad, which... Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, we're into another Suicide Squad. Why? I Yeah. The, okay, <laughs> the only, like, thing that I saw like when watching like a little bit of the trailer was that Idris Elba's in it now and like that I'm like kind of curious he's, on like what his character's about but like I'm oh, he's great and everything but I don't know if he yeah. could if it's any, anything even close to what the last one was I don't even think DC, he's, I, DC has not been yeah I, I tell you what though they they do release uh, animated movies periodically and those more kind of follow like a comic book uh, storyline okay as those have been pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Like, the animated versions versus, like, the live action, yeah, way the, better. they have not been, like, making hits with the uh, live action stuff. The, yeah. on, the only hits I would say DC has had so far, and this could just be me, would be, the like, the first Wonder Woman. Yeah. That yeah, one was definitely. that one carried it, the it. universe. Yeah. And then Aquaman, actually. Aquaman, yeah. That was, like, hmm. the, the graphics and stuff on that one was unbelievable. Like, it was just, wow. Yep. And parts of that filmed in my home province. Hey. Yeah. I, I, I could recognize it, too. It's like, Shout I know those trees. Yeah. <laughs> Big up, Snoopin' Land. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else uh, came up? Uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Cool. This yeah. one I, I'm actually kind of excited about because it looks pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed the original, like, 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. That's kind of one of my guilty pleasures. Uh, no, that's guilt-free. Yeah. That's guilt-free. I mean, if, you like the, if you're digging the second one, then you should probably sh- take a long look in the mirror and 
we yeah, consider the, the second one, Annihilation, where they kill yeah. off like Johnny Cage in the first thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that's not, not not so much fun. But the original like Mortal Kombat movie, like plus its soundtrack. Yeah, like, that's do, iconic. Do, 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 Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Test your might. Yeah, that was. Uh, but uh, no, the they released a few pictures. They look pretty good. There's like a pic of Sub Zero and Sonya, and uh, Liu Kang, and uh, a few other characters. So it's looking good. Hopefully, it, it turns out all right. If it's got Kung Lao in it, I'm sold. It's got Kung Lao. Does it? Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'll be watching that. <laughs> okay. Um, th- now this is kind of the shortest thing that popped up. They just had The Matrix Four, which yeah. I know they're filming yeah. right now. Because uh, I've seen, like, uh, someone on Reddit post it, like, a pic. They lived near where they were filming, and they could see, like, hmm. uh, them going across, like, the wire and stuff. Uh, a little nervous about this one. Yeah. I, 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 I loved the first Matrix. I think, like, every, loved, I think loved the, first the first Matrix, Matrix was everybody likes that one. But then a lot of, Yeah, a lot of people dog the second one. Yeah. I still really enjoy that one. The third one, not so much. And just the Wachowski's track record, like, since the Matrix movies, because, like, that was a speed racer. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it, but you put John Goodman in anything, I'm you got my Didn't attention. Didn't they do that like yeah. Jupiter Ascending or something? Yeah, that was the one with Channing Tatum and um, yeah, he's like a dog, yeah. like a dog yeah, guy. He's a weird... it, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, oh, well, they did that one with Tom Hanks. Where There's like a lot multiple of movies time... with Tom Hanks. <laughs> but well done by the Wachowskis. There's like multiple timelines. Oh, God. Uh, oh that's gonna drive me nuts. But that. it wasn't it wasn't received very well. No. So there, I mean, all I'm saying is their track record has been a uh, on the decline since the mid '90s, which is kind of well. Ho- hopefully, this uh, will be their redemption, and hopefully, hopefully, maybe it'll bring some new life into the uh, Matrix franchise, which would be cool. Yeah, uh, would be cool. Absolutely. I mean, the internet, the concept of the internet itself is completely different. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they uh, kind of tackle that. Uh, yeah, finally, plus, oh, I was just going to throw in a plus yeah. a. Keanu is that like peak Keanu? Oh, he no, totally like, is. Like, I, I've, uh, I think he's like almost more popular now than ever. I think so. At least according to the like the I internet think, loves him. I think it's like a it's a wave thing with him. It's like he was really he popular when like the Matrix came out, and then he kind of like hit out for a little bit, and then John Wick came out, and then everybody yeah. was like, "Oh my god!" And then it's like so it's like now he's just like well, basically on top of the world, really. Bill and Ted. Yeah. Then down. Yeah. Then uh, Matrix. Like yeah. my own private then Idaho then. was really good. I don't know if anyone saw that. Which one? My own private Idaho. I don't think I've seen yeah, that. him and uh, River Phoenix. Oh, Ooh. sounds good. Yeah, it was really good. It was, an indie, it was an indie movie. Okay. Yeah, but indie movies like people, I feel like people are too quick to be like, "Oh, it's not like a big company," so. Uh, but it's like, eh, some of the best movies come from indies. That is true. It was a '90s thing mostly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also popped up was The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. Actually, fun fact: the same guy who's doing Mortal Kombat and like runs the universe and does directed Aquaman, uh, James Wan, I believe his name is, yeah. actually yeah. runs that. So. I've never actually had a chance to see any of the Conjuring or Annabelle movies. So yeah. um, I never really got into it. See, I did. Either. I definitely did because I was I was hoping for maybe like another Chucky. In yeah. the sense of like something <laughs> iconic like that, uh, the first one wasn't bad. Like The Conjuring, I liked The Conjuring way better than I liked Annabelle, though. Okay. Because like Annabelle was like, oh, possessed all. So could, could you start <laughs> at The Conjuring? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that's what how they they're kind of doing it is like basically they're following the cases of um, the couple, the Warrens, and it's like uh, they're actually going through all of like the actual uh, cases that they did like in real life, obviously, and it's like it starts with the Conjuring, and then they're going off of like all of the possessed things they have in their little possession room, which by the way, like why would you keep that? Like that <laughs> yeah, seems like a bad it. move. Just, just it's what destroy a, it. Yeah, it's like one of those things where somebody's in a haunted house and you're just like, leave. Yeah, like move. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like... Break a window. Get your stuff and go. Well, and it's awkward too, because it's like they had a kid. And the kid was not allowed in the room, but, like, obviously you tell a kid no, they're going to be like, well, yeah. I'm going to go check this out now. And it's, like, they actually ta- touch about that in the Annabelle series where it's, like, the girl goes and, like, the doll gets out of the cage. And they're like, oh, no, like, what happened? It's like, well, you cl- told your kid not to go play with this doll. So, obviously. Yeah. Guess like, what happened? Like, I, I keep waking up with a pillow over my face and a doll on top of it. Yeah. Like, just get rid of the, the doll. <laughs> it's not that hard. Yeah. Or the pillow. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, but, yeah. I mean, if you look at I horror like movies, though, like, it, they have a trope for, like, nobody being that smart. Nope. Like, that's, like the, 
the level of intelligence in horror movies is always way lower. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of uh, forethought on display. <laughs> yeah. Like Have you folks seen Cabin in the Woods? Yes. 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 That's, now, a good that, one. that's that's a great take on like the horror tropes. I loved that. I thought that yeah. was genius. So many Easter eggs in there. Oh, oh yeah. Like, you great. can watch it ten times and still miss stuff. Oh yeah. yeah which like, I'm all about. I, I can definitely rewatch that movie over and over and over again. Like y- yeah, it's one of those ones for sure. Um, did Josh Whedon did that do that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I just I remember like they had like quite a few Internet, big names. <laughs> Comment down below. Smash uh, that like button. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, kind of possessed things, uh, we watched the trailer for uh, a Nick Cage yes. movie called Willy's Wonderland. I, and it looks oh, fantastic. I am yes, beyond excited for this one. It yeah. actually does look like, it a, like does. a legit like a ton of fun. It, yeah, it does. Like. I feel like Nick Cage is like kind of like that like he has like that cult following. It's like he, oh, yeah. he's like one of those actors. It's just it's Nick Cage in every movie. Yeah. Like <laughs> and, and he either makes things like 100 percent awesome or not so much. Yeah. It's like. There's... See, see I, I disagree. I think Nick Cage is always awesome. Uh, even in The Wicker Man? Especially The Wicker Man. OK. He's always awesome. He's always Nick Cage, that's yeah. for sure. He like, is objectively awesome. Well, I also feel, though, like when you're watching a Nick Cage movie, you kind of know what you're getting. Like, you're, you're like, oh, it's a Nick Cage movie. Yeah, he's so enjoyable. I got it. <laughs> I, I'm still kind of sad that we didn't get the, uh, the, the 90s Superman yeah. with Nick Cage. That yeah. would have been incredible. Directed by Tim Burton. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, th- humankind. There are, there human are pictures of the internet of uh, Nick Cage, a long-haired Nick Cage, yep. in like a blue Superman, like organic-looking suit. Uh, look it up because uh, some uh, pretty... God. Interesting things. Oh, it would have been wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, Nick Cage is one of those actors where it's like, when you watch it, you know he's having fun, right? Like, I feel like if you were to write a script and just send it to Nick Cage, he'd be down. Probably. (laughs) Because, like, I don't think I've seen a movie that made sense with Nick, like, without Nick Cage in it. Yeah. You know? I I like the color of outer space. That one was incredible. I like that that one a lot. Yeah. Um, Knowing. Does anybody remember that one? Oh, we I can see so. the future, but like yeah. only like a couple minutes into the yeah. future. Yeah, no, it was like you could see like a couple that. minutes, and it was. I I rewatched. I actually had a Nick Cage marathon the other day because I was like, you know what, Nick Cage, let's do it. And yeah. uh, some of his movies, man, they either they're either great or they just don't hit. Yeah, no, Raising Arizona, Raising Arizona, Coen Brothers movie from the eighties. Can't say I've watched it. Now they steal a baby. Oh my god! They steal if you haven't seen it, it's a uh, him and. Uh, I think oh, I've seen it, but I can't uh, remember her name. But yeah, he plays like a, basically like a hick. It's a, it's <laughs> actually, John Goodman's in that too. Hey, yeah. double John go. Goodman. So. Yeah, perfect. But um, yeah, no, check that one out. Yeah. If you're down for some Nick Cage, Raising Arizona. But anyway, uh, Willie's Wonderland. Yes, yeah, yeah, back, yeah, to, back to the topic. <laughs> kind of the uh, we, we 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 got caged. Yeah, we did. Um, <laughs> nice. Kind of looks like the plot is uh, this guy stops, his car breaks down. He's asked to clean this abandoned uh, kind of uh, music part. Uh, carnival yeah. type thing and uh, apparently there's haunted animatronics and Nick Cage is not frightened by the haunted animatronics oh no he's all about it yeah, yeah. no it's, uh, it's it's a little bit of a trend that we've actually been seeing lately it's the, the people who are too angry to die <laughs> trend yeah it's happened in a few pieces of media it's happened in like the latest Doom games it's just a silent protagonist and he just wails on everybody uh, it's happening in a few different shows, but I feel like that's what we're getting because he doesn't speak in the trailer. Yeah. And I don't know if he's actually going to speak in the film. See, like, my theory on that is that they're going to wait until, like, the very, like, climax of the film and give him, like, the best one liner. And then that's it. That's all he's going to uh, say. Yeah, I can see that happening. And it's just going to be incredible. Like, and that's going to be, like, the most quoted line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's basically Nicolas Cage versus Chuck E. Cheese. Pretty much. Oh my Pretty god! Much. Yeah, yeah, like like a really. <laughs> that, yeah, like, I'm sure that. that's how they pitched it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're gonna make uh, yeah, Nick Cage, but uh, yeah, the whole haunted animatronics thing has been kind of. Uh, it was big on the internet for a while because they released these Five Nights at Freddy's games. Oh yeah, I remember big that. with like the the kids, and uh, that's all about haunted animatronics. So, yeah. Uh, it's been kind of a thing. Uh, I'm kind of curious why we didn't see like a Five Nights at Freddy's movie yet but hmm. yeah. this will probably fill the void what you're looking for plus Nick Cage yeah, yeah. yeah I mean yeah it checks all the boxes absolutely really. can I just throw in there that my buddy I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name him but uh, he got kicked off of Facebook <laughs> permanently because he convinced a bunch of people to get Nicolas Cage tattoos 
I mean, apparently against that's against the uh, terms of service. Terms of service. I didn't read that clause. I mean, people should have some sort of self responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no one's going to hold you uh, down to force. I don't know how he did it, case. but it happened. <laughs> it's not True like story. he drugged them and then took them to a tattoo parlor and was like, "Hey." Nick Cage, yep. all the way. Like, yeah, come know. on. I don't know like, how he did it. I don't know how he did it, but this, yeah. That's, all, so that's yeah, also, that's also like, story. that's impressive and kind of terrifying. Like, that he had that kind of a power. Be like, hey, guys, you yeah, should get Nick Cage. probably be in charge of a cult or something. Yeah. That's Nick, not. A Nick Cage cult? Nick Cage cult. I'd I'm sure one people. exists. Oh, there has probably. to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's the internet. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. yeah. Anyway, sorry. I said to throw that in there. <laughs> Well, that actually uh, brings us to the end of uh, this episode of Media Minute. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you uh, subscribe. Hit that like button. I'm Michael Ford. Oh, before we go, Chet TV is going to have some new programming, Campfire Sessions on Chet TV. Check it out on our YouTube page and on TV. Thanks. Thank you, Shill. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, throw a little plug. Come on. What's, what's wrong with that? I'm Michael Ford. I'm Chris Reskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. Thanks so much for watching.